So you're in Kapuka as what, 18 years old, maybe nearly 19. Yeah, um, no, 18. 18. How long is basic training? I think it's a couple of months, right? It's changed now, but uh, when I was there, it was dead on 12 weeks, so 80 days long. Okay. And, and it, was, it was hard. Uh, it was, you know, it's probably the easiest military stuff I've ever done as far as none of the standards are that high. Yeah. Um, <clears> like, you know, you're shooting scores and your fitness scores are, are low. It's basic training. Like, it's in the word. But that change of mindset from fucking around at school with your mates, getting on the piss wherever and, you know, cruising down to wagon school and going to Subway, <laughs> you're in a yeah. you're in a grown man you're in a grown up's fucking world mm. like it is his way or the highway whoever the corporal or sergeant is and you you haven't learned you like a lot of guys might grow up being you know a bit scared of their their dad really being the authority figure but I can guarantee you your dad's not going at least mine isn't going off like they will you know it's not six in the morning till ten at night every single day every day yeah no exception going in, making your bed perfect and then throwing it up and going, what the fuck, get here, you have seven minutes to go shower, shave, be back, blah, 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 like all day. And that change for me being a bloody bold dickhead um, at 18, that, that, that <clears throat> period of change was, was massive. And the reason, and I haven't, I hated Kapuka and I, and I, I still do, <laughs> but it is so important for young men and women, uh, particularly a lot of women find it easier. I think they are more probably disciplined in everyday life than young yep. men uh, and almost easy. They find that changeover easier um, to do. Whereas some young blokes like me just stuck in your ways, like you wouldn't <clears> believe. <throat> and this corporal has, or corporal or sergeant has three months to turn you from 18 year old Willie fucking around with his mates at high school to being up and deploying to Afghanistan, Iraq or anywhere in the world, kill or be killed or do whatever. And that's, They've got 12 weeks is not long to change someone from an average young civilian to a soldier that yeah, we all look up to, to be earning the name of a digger. That was going um, to be my question was you were in, how, how many years after basic training were you in Afghanistan? Uh, so I did basic in 2014 uh, and then early 15, 2015. And then I was in Afghanistan in uh, 2017. Okay. So a three year and a half, two years. That's yeah. crazy. Like to go oh, from, look, you know, mm. a, as you said, a kid who's thinking about WAG and school and all that type of shit. And, and as we all were at that point, and some of the listeners may be in that moment right now where you just, you don't realize how good school is. Like you just get up, you're just doing your thing. You know, a lot of people have a shit yeah. time at school, but I had a good time there. I enjoyed it. Um, okay. You know, to go from there and then three years later, two and a half years later to be um, in an area where, you know, death is around every corner. It is a dangerous uh, environment to be in. That's where basic training has been. Well, I guess for the military has been the go-to to change that mindset, to go from a civilian mm -hmm. to a soldier, to go from and someone who, yeah. sorry, go on. Sorry, you go. To go from someone who's seriously. fucking around to someone who is, yeah. a, as you said, ready to be killed or kill. Fucking oath. Um, you know, Australia, thank God, is in a, you know, the world at the moment, no matter what you think is going on, is really a more peaceful place than it's ever been. Absolutely. Um, in regards to war fighting. Yes. Um, but if whoever thinks that we couldn't roll into being in the trenches, you know, blow the whistle over the top boys tomorrow is fucking wrong. That could yes. happen at any point. Um, and this is why we have <clears throat> online battalions, which can, you know, within hours mobilized anywhere. Um, this is why we've got it. And that, that's why you've done your training. And that's why it's fucking hard and disciplined is, you know, um, you have to shave every morning. No one really gives a shit about the hair length of your facial hair, but that shaving you learn every single morning at Kapuka is making sure your weapon is clean every single morning that making your bed perfect hospital coins every morning is making sure your shit is squared away and you haven't got shit everywhere. If the enemy attacks when you're somewhere, yeah. um, there's a reason behind all the discipline in it and accountability for yourself and your mates. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, that's what you learn. Um, then you go to the school of infantry um, or we call it the school of cool. <coughs> and that's where you learn your trade. That's where you learn how to be an infantryman. Um, you go from learning how to be a soldier at Kapuka to then how to be um, a rifleman, a professional shooter, I guess, um, gunslinger at Singleton. Um, but speaking on that man of fucking around at school and then going to the army, my biggest shock 
was uh, you get one phone call a week. Um, and after my first week, which was fucked, I remember standing at attention outside fucking my room uh, in Wagga and I called up my best mate, Woogie. Um, anyway, answer the, he answers the phone. He's like, oh, Willie, wait, I'll put you on speaker. All the boys are here. And I'm like, what the fuck? Anyway, um, they're all there. I'm like, why are you guys all together? And they're like, oh, bro, we're on schoolies. And I'm like, fuck, that'd be all right. <laughs> Willie's here had just had the shittest week of my life in the army and the rest of my mates are all on fucking schoolies fucking around. Chasing um, birds, and yeah. dropping pingers, having a great old time and you're no, there yep. doing push-ups in the mud. But I don't regret it at all. Um, it, it made me who I am, I guess. And without it, you know, I still went through this same bullshit cancer journey, then I, I wouldn't have bloody survived it this far at least. Yeah. And... Um, and I mean, well, let's let's talk about the cancer diet. I'd like to get back to Afghanistan at some point. I'm I'm fascinated with that, uh, mm. what it's like to wake up in a war zone every day, and um, and perhaps I, I will say this. I was thinking this before whilst you were talking was on the on the topic of this could t- turn to shit at any moment. That's why I'm always as positive and as. Uh, I, I, I try to commend people who are in the military and I always say, thank you for your service. It's the same with police officers because at any point this could turn to shit and the mm. people who you complain about or say, you know, they're just over there killing people or police officers are doing this, this and this. They are the people that will protect your life if something horrible happens and that could happen at any point and that is the point of human history like you, you talk about the um uh, what's the, the the you know the, the we're seven seconds to midnight on the doomsday clock like the worst it's ever been you know this could turn to shit at any moment so i think it's always important to remember that uh we're skating on thin ice every single everywhere we go mm, yeah it, you know, it's it's one of those things. The respect for servicemen and women, and uh, and that extends into our emergency services. They're the ones who sacrifice, you know, their own shit for yours. And that doesn't that doesn't mean in Afghanistan getting killed or in wherever. That just means they work longer hours than they're bloody paid for. Mm. Um, at some point, they have signed a dotted line to give their life for the country. And the country, you know, what the country is? It's fucking me and you. Mm. And Sally next door and Kate yeah. up the road and all those. That's who that's who Australia is. No one gives a shit about the sand, bloody wherever. It's it's you and me and everyone else. That's yeah. who they've signed away their life for, whether it be emergency service, um, service men and women, whatever, you know, and bad shit gets pulled up out of the mud and you hear of one or two incidents. Well, you don't hear about the fucking millions of incidents that happen every single day that are fantastic good stuff that happens because it doesn't doesn't trend in the media no. um no. well the on the topic of the media you need to be able to sell stories and willie yeah. doing something good over overseas that changes someone's life in the community or something like that mate you know that's fantastic and wonderful and something that'll stay with you and your friends forever but it you, people aren't going to click on it you're not going to make ads ad money ad money from <laughs> that like it's it's that is you know the basis of the shitstorm that is our media circles at the moment you know it, it is it is piss poor in in many senses of the word or the the idea that that the media just goes out and tries to sell ad space is just so disgusting and gross and horrible but it is the world we are in <laughs> unfortunately that's it what is. we're dealing with but yeah it is but you know, i think uh, people need to hold some personal responsibility and accountability for the shit they put out there as well um, and, and I could have, have more. I could have more followers on my Instagram or my YouTube or whatever if I started releasing whatever. Um, but that's bullshit. Have some have some fucking self respect um, and some accountability. That if you put your name in an article that's just fucking bullshit and it turns out to be bullshit, you should be on the fucking chopping block. Yeah, it's fucked. Yeah. It's um, yeah. you know, it's every day. I know guys who live in fear of what if they pull this up. What if that. And they've done nothing wrong. It, it just it's one of those things. Yeah. And I, I when I make a video, I always or or I read something on the news, you know, I'm very very cognizant of thinking, okay, is that is that correct? Is that is are they using the right figures? Okay, they've got these figures. I, I know yesterday they said about the the coronavirus in America uh, killing X amount of people and it's the leading cause of death. But I know that in those particular places in America that every single person who died from Alzheimer's, if they also had coronavirus, they would be a coronavirus death. So I don't sit at that and say, no, the coronavirus isn't hurting people. Obviously it is. I sit there and I go, okay, can we trust every single thing you're hearing? 
And I consistently and over my entire life have come to the conclusion that no, you have to do your own research. You have to sort of figure these things out for yourself because the stuff that we are being fed and, you know, people stop listening to you when you say, oh, you can't trust the mainstream media. You go, oh, you're a conspiracy, conspiracy theorist or you're full of shit. But it is just so true. But people shouldn't live in fear like that. Fear of getting cancelled. But this is also a point of you shouldn't be afraid to fuck up, but you need to take responsibility that, hey, look, I used this statistic and I was wrong. Sorry yeah. about that. This is actually what it is. I've been informed. Whatever. No one should be in fear of fucking up. Everyone fucks up. No one's perfect. But I never see, or I see very, very rarely, um, particular larger corporations, I will say, coming out with that. And they'll, they'll just, oh, it'll, it'll untrend eventually. Yeah, we got it wrong. It doesn't matter. Who cares? We, we made the, we made the ad money. Out. People clicked. Who gives a shit? And that's gross. But, yeah. but anyway, we could talk hours about how much the oh, media yeah, no, that's right. <laughs>